that's right, it's real. It's a real thing. I got it 3D printed and uh, it turned out to be more fascinating than I had thought. So this is gonna be an episode of talking more about this geometry, some ideas I had about it and some discoveries that I made. So here's just a giant mess of lines. Um, these are the three different volumes visualized in another way. Here's the, the visual volume for the enclosed volume. But then uh, here's a different way of looking at it. So if you look at this, you can see that there are uh, a bunch of holes, obviously. And if um, if you try to put fluid in, like, you know, along the, the lines here, straight in, uh, it's going to hit one of these saddle surfaces and divert. But if you look at it kind of at an angle here, uh, you can see better and isometric, you can see that there are these diagonal holes. And so that is uh, what this is trying to demonstrate. So this is one uh, cell stacked vertically, one set of vertically stacked cells. Um, and fans of Triop will note a fascinating shape there. If you're, if you're familiar with that, I thought that was cool. But uh, these are uh, let's turn off this. Uh, these are the diagonal lines. So I've adjusted it so that they're at exact right angles. So these are 45 degree angles. And you can see that the uh, the lines here are going down and also going up along those lines. So these, these are just tracing out the center of those diagonals. So there's that set of uh, pairs of them. And then uh, there's a uh, set of three. You can see they're kind of rotated around the vertical axis here. Kind of um, rotational symmetry kind of thing. And so there's another set of three. And interestingly, these don't intersect. So that's kind of fascinating. But these do intersect. So now we've got the whole set of all six. And these are six primary axes along which um, along which these work. But then you can also, they're also offset. So here's a, a set of three and you can kind of see them uh, in the in the diagonal here. You can see there's a, a set of uh, six there, there's a set of six there, there's a set of six there. So these are all intersecting because they're all in the same volume. But then there's also uh, the other two volumes and these don't intersect. So the, the purple one doesn't intersect, the red one doesn't intersect the green one. They're all totally independent. You can kind of see the, the uh, hexagonal shape here and uh, hexagonal shape there. Anyway, so that is, uh, that's something interesting that I noticed. So if you wanted to run um, wires or cables or something through these, then you could do it in along these conduits. And if you wanted to offset them, uh, up or down or sideways or something like that to, to avoid the center line, then you could have them all inside the same volume without crossing. Um, and the reason I was thinking about that would be, was because this thing reminded me of, um, of a spaceship. I was looking at this, and so I've been thinking about spaceships for a while. I've got another video um, about procedural spaceships. Uh, there should be a link to that. But... Um, I've been thinking about spaceships for a while and, and how most spaceship designs are basically ocean ship designs uh, from marine vessels on Earth, uh, which is fine. I mean, there are many similarities. There's one thing, though, that's very different, which is that spaceships are in zero-g. So instead of having layers, which is what you have on a ship, uh, you would have volumes that are connected together somehow. And I've always kind of struggled with the idea of like, okay, if you really wanted like an ideally geome geometric ship, um, you'd have these volumes connected together in such a way that you could have like, instead of corridors that are just straight corridors and then like, you know, rooms alongside and then all those stacked in layers like you do in a normal vessel, um, you'd have it in some sort of other way, some other geometry. What geometry? I don't know. But now I was thinking, hey, this geometry has three separate volumes. And from working on the Tramp Destroyer, which I believe I made a video about. Nope, I didn't make a video about it. Anyway, uh, 
I should make a video about it. In fact, let's pull that up. Here we go. I've got a website. Here's a, there's a, I'll put a link to this in the, in the description. But this is, uh, it was a piece of bark that I found on the ground. And uh, it's, it was, it looked like a spaceship to me. And so I was like, I'm going to make it into a spaceship. And so anyway, in the process of developing this, I came up with these three kind of sets of systems. I didn't have three at the time, but in looking back on it, there are kind of three different distinct sets of, of systems. There's the habitation areas, which are like places where the crew go, uh, normally go. Uh, there's the machinery section, which is like where you have all the the uh, reactors and the storage tanks and the um, warehouses and all that kind of thing. And then there's the robotic automation kind of area. And, uh, and I was like, oh, this thing has three volumes in it. This has three volumes. And so it's like, those could be the three different volumes. And because they're all interleaved, each one connects to all the other ones. So anyway, I was like, wow, oh, this could be a spaceship thing. And then independently, I was showing this to my wife and, uh, and she was like, oh, it looks like a spaceship. And I was like, yes, yes, it's true. It does look like a spaceship. So anyway, that was fascinating. So, so one of the things I was thinking about is this, if you had, if you had these things, these could be corridors, like these, these red lines here or the green lines or whatever, right? It doesn't really matter, but these could be like, uh, this is the habitation area. And then these are the corridors. And then inside these spaces, you've got these kind of um, areas where you've got something that's happening in this room, right? That's a crew quarters or it's uh, some sort of um, uh, lunch room or uh, maybe a, a recreational area or something like that, right? And so then you've got these corridors that can be left open or you can always fill some in there are six connections from each cell and so you could block some off right you could block off up to five of them and still have the room accessible so uh anyway so it was just this this idea is like oh this could be like the spaceship interior volume because another thing that i've been struggling with is there's all these cool spaceship designs and and the spaceships always look really cool uh but i and i've come up with a system that's called what is it uh star sage where the hyperspace works on the shape of space in that area and so your spaceship has to be a specific shape in order for it to work in hyperspace and uh so anyway it was a justification for why it needs to look all cool and crazy instead of just being a sphere which is the most reasonable way to make a spaceship if you're going to make one so that whole thing um i got to thinking okay but like it looks like that, but then how do you do the interior layout? Like what is all the stuff? And and they've got these, uh, so the procedural spaceship um, video, I should also link that. But if you're gonna make a spaceship like that, there are these big chunks, these big greebles, and those, are, those can be like major pieces of equipment. But then like the rest of the ship is just interior volume and like how's it laid out? Is it in layers? Well, that doesn't make any sense because it's in space, it's in three dimensions, there's zero gravity. Well, so if we use this, then we can do the interior volume in any, arbitrary shape because this will this is a space filling volume and it's segregated so you can you know if you if you got a hole punched in your spaceship or whatever it doesn't evacuate the whole ship it just evacuates one third of the ship and there's still two thirds of the ship that are left uh un unpunctured um undamaged so anyway so this was like oh this is a fascinating like revelation kind of idea of if we use this shape for the spaceship then it doesn't matter what shape the spaceship is because you're always going to have the volume filled with all your equipment and stuff. You don't have dead space because there's no dead space in here. It's all just boundaries between volumes. So anyway, that is what I'm going to talk about in more extent here. So I've got some notes. Uh, so I already talked about the crew volume a little bit. Um, and then there's also the, uh, and I'll put all this text in the, in the video description so you can read this if you want. But um, crew areas would be stuff like um, private quarters, uh, dining, um, you know, socialization, recreation areas, control areas, um, work zones, uh, things that things that people would be doing, not necessarily things that machines were doing. Because again, this is like a, this is forward looking, trying to think about what would make sense for a real spaceship, or starship, kind of a like medium fantasy with a little bit of magic or a little bit of magical technology or something. Uh, so probably people aren't going to be like 
pulling levers and making stuff go and like hitting stuff with hammers. Uh, that's more the robots. So then we go into the robotics and automation area. So then this is like drone base. And I was thinking about it kind of like the um, the human side, the crew side is the the circulatory system of like the blood vessels and stuff. And then the, or maybe the robots are, I don't know, but then there's the lymph system, right? Which is this separate parallel system that goes through the whole body um, and and has another function, right? It's got it's this parallel function. So... Anyway, so it's the same idea with the robotic section of the ship and the human section of the ship, is they're all kind of intertwined. And you can kind of see that in, yeah, so here in this section right here, the the green is the crew quarters and the blue is the is the robot quarters, essentially. So I was just thinking something like that, only more more pronounced. Which with this volume is, you know, you'd be even more pronounced because it's there. There's no extra space, right? The the walls are shared. They've got all these shared walls, so you don't have to have uh, the walls for this thing and then the walls for that thing. They're shared walls, so it's like half the. You you end up with half the amount of walls, uh, and half the amount of material. So it's like super efficient. It's really. Oh, that was another thing. Another thing that I noticed about this is that it is really really rigid. So I was kind of worried that it would be flexible, that you could like twist it or 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 it was going to collapse in some way. I I don't know why I thought that, but it was just this intuition that maybe this was not a very rigid shape, but it turns out this is extremely rigid. It is so, so rigid. Uh, and I think it's because of all these saddle shapes everywhere. They they um, keep it from flexing. It's it's like if you, if you have a piece of armor or something like that, you've got a flat sheet where you can flex it really easily. But if you bend it and... and uh, make it into a, a cone or something like that, then it becomes much more rigid. So this is just, it's such a rigid shape. And that was one of the things I was like, oh, well, this is, I mean, this would work perfectly for a spaceship structure because not only does it work as the structure for the ship, but it also acts as the interior volume uh, containment. Um, so anyway, it's very, very rigid. Okay, so going back to spaceships. Let's see, back to here, back to here. Okay. So there's the robotics volume, and this is like um, drones and uh, and like robots for moving stuff around, um, all the machining, all of the uh, industrial processes kind of stuff, all the automated things that need to be able to move things around. This isn't like installed automation because that's the third volume. The third volume is this uh, static installations volume. And so this is like storage tanks, um, installed uh, machinery generators and backup generators and uh, whatever stuff that doesn't move around that's involved with that's built into the ship more or less where but that still has uh, still has the ability to be it's like appliances this would be like the appliance volume I guess uh, so water heaters and heat exchangers and all that kind of thing although uh, the whole okay so we'll, we'll get there uh, supply and return air for the crew volume. Yeah, yeah, air, uh, air conditioning ducts and stuff. Um, yeah, support equipment, uh, machinery, life support systems, all that stuff is, it lives in the install, in the installed volume, volume. And again, it doesn't have to be completely like open like this. You can have dead ends on a lot of stuff as long as there's one open connection that allows you to connect it to all the other ones so you can get from one place to another if you need a maintenance stuff or, or whatever um so i tried to get mid-journey to make some visualization of this stuff uh, but i could not get it to do zero gravity like it it's always got gravity in its mind just because it's trained on stuff in gravity and there's like there's no artistic reference for it to to think about zero gravity stuff so anyway all of these have railings on them and they've all, yeah, see, there's the railings, and there's always an up and down. And uh, this is not how a spaceship would look. Maybe this, kind of like this, a little bit, um, a little bit like that. This is kind of, this is kind of the idea, right, of, like, you've got these, you know, things all over every surface. This is a little bit better. Uh, still, though, it's got this, like, flat floor that you can walk on and stuff, and it's not zero gravity. This is a little more zero gravity, I guess. This is kind of, kind of the, uh, the look that I would expect to have. Um... Again, railings, there's railings everywhere, so, yeah. So, that's the idea. And then, so each of each of these have walls in between them, right? There's all these little, these little walls separating all these cells. And so if you blew this up, you could imagine that each one of these walls 
has a structure like this in it. So each of the walls have three separate volumes that are they're installed. So if you wanted to have like a so so separating each of these, for example, there's like the electrical power layer um, between the robotics and the installation layer. So there's like one of these walls, one of the three volumes inside the wall that makes up the volume of the wall is uh, electrical conduits. And then if you wanted to have an electrical plug somewhere, you just stick it on the wall somewhere, drill the holes in the right place, and you could have you know some sensors or uh, echolocation, you know, like uh, ultrasonic sensors, something like that, to, to figure out where you drill the holes and connect it up. But because this is permeating the entire structure, maybe even at this scale, this is about the right scale for stuff. Anyway, um, because it's permeating the structure, there's there's a guarantee that you can get to any one of these three or all three of these um, resources anywhere in the ship, anywhere on the walls, because they're, it's you know throughout the walls. The whole wall is a wet wall, if you will. So uh, the three I was thinking. So there's three different volumes. There's the the crew, the robotics, and the uh, static installation volumes. And so then there are three types of walls. There's a crew robotics wall. And I was thinking that one would have um, data lines, so like communications, networking, that kind of stuff. Um, water supply. Uh, so this is like fresh water for um, drinking or for watering plants or uh, you know for cooling, cooling water or whatever. And then uh, water or liquid waste return. So it's like if you want to get rid of waste water somewhere, either it's too hot or uh, it's got stuff in it you don't want, or you know you grind up your garbage in the garbage disposal, whatever, and put it into the walls. So that's like the the third um, the third thing. So those are the three in the crew in the crew robotics boundary walls, and then the walls that separate the robotics section from the installation sections. This is like the tanks, and this is like the robotics and stuff, um, and automation machines. This is kind of like the machine separation wall. Uh, those carry electrical power. Um, cause you don't really need electrical power in the crew area. Uh, the, the crew stuff I, I was kind of imagining, um, doesn't run on, on high power. It, you know, everything runs on the data lines. So the data lines are like, um, power over ethernet or whatever. So it's like low amounts of power, but high signal value. Whereas the electrical power stuff is like really heavy duty conductors that you can carry a lot of energy, transmit or transmit a lot of power all at once. So um, electrical power, pneumatic lines, I was thinking probably makes sense to have like pressurized air uh, for in case you need to um, uh, pressurize a volume quickly, right? If you lose air somewhere, you want to be able to deliver air quickly to that volume or um, you want to have a backup mode of operating stuff. So if the electrical goes down, then you want to have a backup for, for air uh, power um, or what else? Uh, yeah, or you and you can always you can always run it through a turbine and generate electricity using the using the compressed air. So it's like this backup uh, power system that you know runs through the whole ship, and then vacuum hard vacuum. So this could just be exposed to outer space, or you've got vacuum pumps or whatever. And this is like for getting rid of uh, waste gases, or for evacuating process chambers, or anything like that. Anything you need to uh, dump stuff, you've got a vacuum network in that wall. And then the last one, the last boundary between these cells is the uh, the crew and installation boundary. And this one I had a little trouble with, like thinking of what would make sense. So I came up with a few things. I don't know if these are, are the best, but they're what I came up with. Uh, a motile layer. So this is like for really tiny robots, maybe like uh, little tiny spider bots or something like that. They can carry small objects. So this would be like electronic component delivery and... Um, medicine and uh, maybe samples for research, um, uh, anything else like that. You know, small objects that you want to intentionally deliver to a specific location. It's not just like a, you know, mass dispersion um, like you do with water, for example. So this is like specifically delivered uh, object delivery. And uh, maybe there's a conveyor system in there or something, or maybe they're like self-propelled robots. I don't know, but some sort of, it's some sort of way for like, um, this is like miniature delivery system that doesn't go through any of the other spaces in the ship so that you can deliver stuff uh, 
without it being exposed. Maybe, you know, poisons or things that are really hazardous. You don't want it traveling through the volume of the ship. So you've got it inside this, this you know, transport network and you just, you know, fuel pellets or something. I don't know. Uh, so that's motile. is a motile layer. Um, a smart foam layer. So I was thinking there's probably like some sort of um, foam that's, again, like some sort of motile smart uh, substance that maybe uses uh, some amount of nanotechnology and uh, maybe inflatable uh, volumes or whatever, and it can like change shapes and connect to each other and you know expand and contract. And you could use this stuff for building temporary structures, for uh, furniture and, and you know aesthetic stuff. Uh, you could use it as an adhesive. You could use it as um, firefighting substance, um, zone isolation. You could use it for like emergency doors or whatever. Um, you know if you lose um, you lose pressure somewhere, well you can this stuff could come pouring out and and like build a build a barrier to seal up areas uh so like construction structural reinforcement maybe that kind of thing um and then the last one i was thinking was just a nutrient paste good old nutrient paste for you know like food for the crew so i i'm not certain about those last three i feel like i feel like there's some improvement that could be made if you've got any ideas please let me know i'd love to hear from you uh you can let me know in the comments and i'll uh I'll put it under consideration and, and maybe put it in this document because I'm planning on, I'd like to to use this system in, uh, in a fiction book that I'm planning to write about um, AI and space travel and, uh, you know, some big space opera kind of thing. So anyway, uh, that is the stuff I came up with for spaceships. And uh, was there anything else I wanted to talk about in here? talked about the clearance um, directions, we talked about volumes, we talked about connecting stuff together. Uh, let's go back and look at these. This again is the idea of these three different volumes, so you can imagine that the red is robotics and the green is uh, human habitation and the purple is storage, and you can see how they're all kind of adjacent to each other in this way, and then also in three-dimensional space they're adjacent up and down and sideways and everything anyway so yeah i'm i am uh i'm really pleased with how this has all come together with this heat exchanger thing turning into a spaceship architecture essentially it's like a generic space filling spaceship architecture um that is also fractal which is just i love that because now it's like all the walls also have this same self-similar structure so you can like encode the entire structure of the ship using this very, very small geometry. And then you can figure out where anything is just using that fractal structure. Um, maybe, the, maybe the walls of these walls are actually the same structure. I don't know. At, at some point, at some point it seems like it should be solid, but maybe it's like, maybe it's a, a, a fractal foam. It just keeps going all the way down to the, the molecular level. And the whole thing is built out of, like uh, cells of this kind of thing that are snapped together. Um, anyway, so that is the idea for a spaceship architecture thing. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, leave a leave a like, and if you enjoyed it, and uh, subscribe to my channel. I do all kinds of crazy stuff here. It's not just uh, geometry and, and spaceships and things. Hopefully, I'll be doing some game dev at some point. My wife was like, you should make a video game with the spaceship thing. I'm like, all right, cool. Well, I'm, I'm going to explore it and uh, hopefully this turns into something. So, yeah, till next time, we'll see you around.